foolish people try to cling and freeze reality into certain forms. Wise people make the counterintuitive move. Remember my episode called The Counterintuitive Nature of Life, where I talk about counterintuitive moves? Well, here's one more for you. Add it to the list. One of the biggest counterintuitive moves is to teach yourself to embrace impermanence rather than manipulating your way out of it. Accept that the cost of life is death. Not just at the individual biological level. I'm talking about all levels. We're not just talking about biology here. We're talking about corporations, we're talking about religions, we're talking about ideas and languages. See how it goes way beyond biology? Evolution goes way beyond biology, which the biologists don't fully appreciate. The cost of being a form is that eventually you must change form. And really, that's all that death is, is just a change of form. You're changing into something else. You're not really dying. You're a shapeshifter. You're shifting your shape. You've just deluded yourself by attaching yourself to this one shape that, oh my God, I'm going to die. No, you're not going to die. You're just going to change your fucking shape. Get over it. Immortality is impossible through attachment to form. This needs to be understood. That's one consequence of impermanence and oneness. It will never be possible. So I'm actually making a very scientific and empirical prediction here when I say this. What I'm saying is that even after a million years of technological development from today, if mankind is still alive a million years from now, just imagine how much amazing technology we will, we will have invented in a million years. There will still not be a method for immortality through technology. But immortality is possible by detachment from form. And for that, you don't need to wait a million years or some fancy technology, some cryo-freeze or some genetic modifications or some technological uploading of your brain into some computer or some bullshit like this. You don't need that. All you need to do is you got to surrender everything and realize that your true nature is that of a shapeshifter. This impermanence brings with it good news and bad news. The bad news is that everything good that you gain in life will be lost. But the good news is, is that everything bad that befalls you will also be lost and will not be permanent. Which means that this is your safety valve. See, God created a safety valve into every life. And that safety valve is death. So if you're trapped in life and you're suffering terribly and all this and there's no way to escape it at all, well, the consolation is that it won't last. It's impermanent. But of course, the flip side of that is if you're born into some beautiful life, you're born to be a billionaire with a golden spoon in your mouth and you live in the best part of the world and everything is, is perfect for you, well, that too won't last. One comes with the other. It's two sides of the same coin. And that's a very important consequence I want you to, to remember here. This will help you when you're in very difficult times. Remember that hell and suffering cannot be a permanent state. All suffering must be temporary because it's limited. All suffering is finite. You cannot get stuck in unconsciousness forever. Eventually, all beings must wake up and return to God and to awaken to themselves as God. And this is, this safety valve, is God's love and mercy. That's the intelligence of God's design of the entire universe, is that this safety valve has been built in. The only problem is, is that you're terrified of this safety valve. You've labeled the safety valve the greatest evil. That's the irony of it. You've labeled God's infinite intelligence and, 
and love and mercy as the greatest evil. Precisely because your mind is limited and can't see the full, infinite perspective of the design. You're too self-biased, you're too attached to see it. And spirituality is about detaching yourself enough, gaining enough elevation and transcending enough self-bias to be able to see it. And it's this which saves you. It's this which makes life beautiful and allows you to appreciate how amazing life is. Without this, life starts to seem evil and terrible and depressing and pointless and cruel. What we're talking about here, in other terms, is attachment. Attachment creates suffering and disappointment. And what the Buddha taught was how to transcend attachment and to liberate yourself. But of course, not only did the Buddha teach this, but every great sage and mystic all around the world, from Christ to Mahavira to the Jews and the yogis in India, all of them taught this. To transcend suffering, you need to realize that nothing in life should be clung to. Your key mistake is that you've mistaken yourself for a human being. That's not what you really are. That's a false identity. Your true identity is that of an infinite shapeshifter. So, what you need to do, if you want to live the good life, is to realize and take back your identity as an infinite shapeshifter. See, when a shapeshifter clings to one shape or one form, it suffers precisely because it's untrue to its identity, to what it is. See? You're like a TV screen that got stuck on one image, and that's why you suffer. And the point of our work here is to get you unstuck, to get you to surrender your human identity, to realize that your human identity, it's there, but it's temporary. It will be lost. You cannot preserve it no matter how much you want to. So you have to let it go. And one thing you should have noticed already in your life, as evidence of what I'm saying, is that your identity has not been constant throughout your life. Your identity has always been changing. In a sense, you've already died many times in your life. If you're 30 years old right now, if you're 40, 50, 60, think back, compare to what you are, I mean, compare what you were when you were 10 years old to, to who you are now. Totally different. Some stuff seems similar, but you can't even remember how different you used to be. We trick ourselves. Our mind tricks us to, to convince us that, well, I didn't really change. I was the same my whole life. No, you changed enormously. Even if you didn't do self-improvement work, even if you didn't do spiritual work, you still changed so much that it's hard to even call you the same person. Your body has changed. Every cell in your body has changed has died and, and been reborn in this time, multiple times. This happens to you at least once or twice a decade. All of, your, all of the cells in your body reincarnate, we might say. Your belief system has changed. Your career has probably changed. Your likes and dislikes have probably changed. See? You're constantly going through this process because you're a shapeshifter. And that process will continue. And then, of course, it'll get more and more radical over time as well. <laughs> Especially if you do this work. So while your temporary human identity can be lost, and it will be lost, and it must be lost, your identity as a shapeshifter, as an infinite shapeshifter, that can never be lost. That's the only permanent thing there is. Impermanence. 
impermanence, shape-shifting, these are just synonyms for the same thing. As an infinite shape-shifter, you are immortal. 